Hi kids, and welcome to E-Day of the ABC Countdown. Today, we're gonna to be talking about exercise. Exercise helps your body and your brain grow and keeps us healthy. Many years ago, before people lived in houses and got their food from the grocery store, people used to walk miles and miles hunting for berries and looking for animals to eat, and they didn't need to exercise because they were always exercising. Now that we're stuck in the house, exercise is more important than ever. So I hope you like our exercise video today, and I hope you decide to make exercise a part of your day each and every day. It'll help you live a long time and enjoy your life a lot. Let's keep going with our nonsense words that use four letters. Remember, these are words that use sh, w, th, and ch. Mish. Gotch, fit, wag, lath, sham, fath, shap, whip, myth, chot, shun, notch, lith, wat, shod, chip, up. Awesome work. Next, we're going to continue reading our sight word sentences. All you need to do is do your best to read the sentence and then listen to me to hear if you got it right. We should open the box. Should Mrs. Cat come over? They give me a kite. After school, I eat cake. I have a box from her. Awesome work. Next, we're going to work on writing some sentences. These sentences Use the phonics and the sight words we've been working on all year. If you don't have a pencil and paper or a marker and a whiteboard, go grab that now and come right back. Our first sentence is, we keep the tree clean. We keep the tree clean. We keep the tree clean. Okay, let's take a look. We have lots of different ways to make a long E sound in this sentence. In we, we have just W and E. In keep, we have two E's. We have the same type of long E in tree with two E's again. And then in clean, we have E and A together to make a long E sound. Let's go on to our next sentence. She needs to read. She needs to read. She needs to read. All right, so we see she has a long E sound in the first word. That is made with just one E. Then in needs, we make long E by having two E's together. And then in read, we have E A. Let's go to our next sentence. I hope we play all day. I hope we play all day. I hope we play all day. So we see that in hope we have long O with the magic silent E. 
in we, we have a long E with E by itself. Play and day both have long A sounds, and those are made with A-Y. Let's go to our next sentence. Can we paint in the rain? Can we paint in the rain? Can we paint in the rain? All right, so let's take a look at it. We, of course, with our long E that has just the letter E, paint has that long A sound, and so does rain. How do they make it? With A and I together. Let's look at our last sentence. We pay for the mail. We pay for the mail. We pay for the mail. So pay is made with a y that A sound, and then the A sound in male is made with AI. Great work. Yesterday, we talked about character and how big a part character plays in stories. Today, we're going to be talking about setting. Setting is a very important ingredient when it comes to making a story. Setting gives characters something to interact with. Think of the setting you're in right now. It was very different when we were at school, wasn't it? Thinking about myself, if I were teaching this to you at school, I would probably be sitting in the yellow chair and you would be sitting on the carpet. Instead, I'm sitting here in front of my computer and recording it. Let's think about what makes a setting. I know a lot of you know that setting is where the story takes place. But it isn't just where it takes place, it's what makes that place special. Let's think of some examples. If you have read or seen the Harry Potter movies, you know that Hogwarts is no ordinary school. Hogwarts has pictures that talk, secret rooms, and tunnels going everywhere. That's not quite like Goethe's school, is it? Let's think of another example, Sesame Street. All the characters live on the same street. When they walk out of their house, they can easily go talk to another character. If they lived far away, the characters would need to talk on the phone or call each other through a web chat. Let's think of the stories that I've been reading to you this year. In Charlotte's Web, Wilbur and Charlotte live on a farm with lots of other animals. If they lived at a pet store, or in someone's house, it would be a very different story. Let's think about characters and how we can take characters we know and put them into stories that we have read. Let's go back to Curious George. Can you imagine if Curious George came to Goethe's school? I can think of a lot of silly things that might happen. Maybe George would get into the library and start throwing books everywhere. Oh boy, would Miss Mariscal have a fit. And what about the music room? Don't you think George would like to play the xylophone? In the end, George would probably help Miss Cargus fill buckets and probably make everyone at the school cheer. If this story took place at your house, a lot of these things wouldn't be options. So think about how your setting and your characters can work together to make a better story. Let's think of another one. If SpongeBob came to Goethe school, I think the first thing he would need to think about is breathing. SpongeBob lives underwater and is an aquatic animal, so being above the water would be something different. After that, maybe he would go meet up with the lunch staff and make some burgers. Just think, with your character and an unlimited choice of settings, you can send them anywhere. So, today, 
when you're thinking about writing a setting for your story, let's think about these questions. What is the setting of your story? Are there more than one? If we think about Curious George gets a medal, the story begins in his house, then goes to a farm, then to the science museum, and then to outer space. That's four settings. The next question I want you to ask yourself is, what does your setting look and feel like? Is it inside or outside? What sorts of things would you see in your setting? If we are going to set our setting in Chicago, we would probably see buildings and streets. If we were going to set it out in the country or in the mountains, we might see more trees and animals. Next, is your setting magical or special in some way? The next question I want you to ask is, what does your setting have that your character or characters will like? Think of it this way. If Pete the Cat came to Goethe's school, I bet Pete would love all the bucket filling that goes on. He would love all the teachers and the kids, which are characters, but having all those kids together in a school makes them part of the setting. Next, think about what in your setting will be hard for your characters. If the Grinch came to Goethe's school, maybe all that bucket filling would bother him. I hope that you have some ideas about settings for your stories. Good luck writing, and let me know if you need any help. Have a great day!